Hello, 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 darkness, my heart. Anyway, <laughs> hello everybody and welcome to another Captain's Draft 3.0 presented Dire by Dota Deep Cinema Peak. and Moonduck TV. I am your caster for today, even though this is not a live stream, I don't really care, I'm your caster for today. Party PD, and we are here at game two of Digital Chaos versus Complexity Gaming. Uh, we're going to talk about these three bands that are picked up here because I loaded in late because I was on Minecraft for four minutes. Yay, Minecraft Radiant for four minutes. Alright, so the IO was banned out. The Rude Mother almost said Bloodseeker. Uh, Chen was banned out. So a lot of minion people banned out because on the other side, Enchantress was banned out. Tidehunter and Kunka. I was going to call him his Tidebringer ability, but... Whatever, and then on the side of picks, Digital Chaos, uh, actual first pick, was Complexity Gaming. So Complexity ended up picking up the Gyrocopter yet again to try and secure this uh, gameplay uh, method here. But they might put it on a different person to play a different sort of Gyrocopter. Uh, meanwhile, on the side of Digital Chaos, they pick up the Viper and the Global War, known as Mindstalker. And next pickup would be the Slardar. Slardar, in real play, in normal play, has been getting a lot of love recently. There's a Meepo in the pool. Somebody has to pick Meepo. Please. Just complexity. Pick Meepo and throw the game. Play the next Dire game for real. Oh, wait, no. Uh, Digital Chaos, play. Pick Meepo, throw the game, and then play the next game for real. Uh, this will be the last game I'm casting, though, because... Uh, it's like 1 o'clock and I got other stuff I want to do for the next four and a half hours, I think. 5.30, Yeah, okay, yeah. So I want to do that and then uh, I'll be back later. Uh, maybe cast a game at 7 o'clock, I don't know. Because uh, I was given more flexible time in my office, which is beautiful because I guess during the day there's more people that are down here using the interwebs to cause a bit of a problem with my uh, pickup here, but it's, it's not the end of the world. If I can't play for one day, I'll just cast, because I don't need a lot of internet to cast, because I'm not doing anything. Alright, so on the side of complexity, you pick up the... No, uh, Digital Chaos actually had Ancient Apparition. Does probably to... Uh, probably to prevent Radiant Digital Team Chaos Peak. from picking it up. Instead, the counter pickup with the Spectre and a Dazzle, which... Dazzle also has been getting millions of love in normal play normal pro play. I'm not saying this isn't not I'm not saying that this isn't pro play, just it's not all pick captain's draft. Or captain's mode. <laughs> I didn't know I had a stuffy nose. I had no idea. I was talking way too fast. Way too quick. Anyway, so Spectre picked up on the side of Digital Chaos with the Dazzle being the offhand pickup here. If there was a Huskar, that would be the end of the world here. But again, there isn't. There's a troll again. And a Winter Wyvern again. And uh, now that they have the Ancient Apparition, you know, Complexity Gaming could get away with this Winter Wyvern pickup. But what they really want is probably the semi-core of some sort. Maybe a Marana, and maybe instead of a, uh, maybe not a Marana, but maybe a Phoenix to counter out some heavy team fight here. But there's too much attack speed on the side of Digital Chaos for Phoenix to be well justified. Maybe a Warlock to counter out the team fight. Maybe an Ogre McGee to try and stun out the carries. Who knows, the Windy's still up as well. Could be a perfect shackle game because there are two, two to two and a half melees. Uh, Viper's not really, really a melee, it's, uh, not really ranged. But, uh, they're gonna pick up the Ogre McGee and the Warlock, so they're looking for some crazy counter-out team fight with double-up stun and some searing chains. Most likely, this Warlock is gonna end up going 1-3-1 one, one, very beginning in the game here, so they can end up getting up that shackle damage that's gonna do some crazy power against the rest of the game here. But Dazzle just out-healed. Phoenix is picked up on the side of Digital Chaos, which is good because there's not really that much attack speed going out the side of Complexity Gaming. Gyrocopter won't be able to promote a lot of early attack speed to counter out these team fights against the Phoenix. So the Phoenix on Digital Chaos was definitely a really good pickup. Even to counter out the Ancient Apparition with the fact that uh, Zephyrk will pop down that the uh, the ice right quick and it'll make them attack slower. So um, the only thing, because Warlock Minions, it has to be from a player in order for the ball to die. So this will be a very interesting team lineup because it's a semi-team fight up to Phoenix and the Viper on Digital Chaos, and then it's a heavy team fight with semi-carry roaming support on the side of Complexity with the 
Ogre McGee, Warlock, and then, then the Gyrocopter. Searing remain. Chains are definitely going to be a primary thing that Warlock is going to want to put on here. In Five fact, it's probably going to go 2-2-1 yeah. instead, uh, so we can get these Searing Chains uh, uh, things off. TS. Who's TS? All right, so we're going to go and introduce the Radiant, as always. We always start with the Radiant, because I like the Radiant the most. Swindles is going to be playing the Slardar. The Handskin is going to be on the Ogre McGee. Z-Freak is running the Ancient Apparition. Chesley on the Gyrocopter again. And Limp running the Warlock. On the side of the Dire team, we have Bulba being played on the Phoenix. Or Phoenix being played on the Bulba. I don't really care. Resolutions on the Viper. So we're going to see some crazy... Crazy Vi Viper play is no doubt. 1437, so he's definitely going to be running this as a semi-support with the Global Ward capability. And, um... Owie on the Dazzle with Yewar on the Spectre. And, uh, most likely we're actually going to see the Viper mid with the Dark... With the Tri-Lane of... Probably Yewar, Owie, and 1437 in top with Volpa being the solo off-lane. Most likely going into boots of some sort. And then, um... Just, I'd love it how jo how Ogre McGee was just scratching his stomach with nothing happening. Uh, Sentry's immediately picked up on Ogre McGee, hopefully trying to get somewhere with this. Sentry's also picked up on the side of Dazzle. Um, so yeah, maybe I got my little tri-lane prediction right. Spectre is going top, uh, but it looks like it might be an off-lane Night Stalker with Bulba instead. So it's a it's a possible dual lane, maybe a tri-lane bot. No, it's not. Uh, the 1437 is making his way. Uh, more to the top lane here. He does have one of the wards, but Phoenix probably has the other one. Uh, no, he doesn't. And uh, does Viper have one of them? No. Okay, so it might be a dual lane bot. It might be the standard 2 1 2 with, uh, you know, the usual pug lineup. 14 7, hopefully trying to be the bait here because uh, they don't want to lose anyone really good off this initial uh, encounter here. Uh, I love to be like, oh, look at the net worth. Oh, this, uh, the Warlock's actually the highest on the net worth at the moment. But that's because he didn't buy anything. In fact, he might actually be the middle the here battle. instead of the Gyrocopter. Which uh, could be very questionable here. The Gyro could be the off lane, depending on what he specs here. But there is no specs going on anyone yet. Um, yeah, no one specced anything. That's how pro players work, guys. You don't spec anything until the game starts. And, uh, yeah, there you go. So, Top Rune has little to no contest. In fact, uh, I don't know what Hanskin or Swindles is doing, but he's just chilling out there in the top the four. He's going to try and probably pull the wave here. But, um, no contest for the side of Spectre here. Spectre is going to be the top lane. Could be solo easy lane. Could not be. But Dazzle, you know, he's making his way back top. Swindles is trying to deny some of the creep spawning here. In fact, might catch out. And no, oh, yeah, he does. He does catch out the whole wave here. And he's going to try and drag it out, but he's in a really bad spot here. Yewar is going to spec Dagger, most likely, at the very beginning, and try and get some counter team fight here. Not really going to happen, but Dazzle coming around. He's got Shallow Wave spec first, too, so not really too much coming off for extra carry potential here. And the first wave is going to be stuck on top of the tower for Yewar here. And uh, they're going to try and take this wave and put it into some neutral camps or just drag it around the tower into the next wave here. In fact, the coach draws it out, whoever the coach is. And uh, just drags it out into their bottom, taking a little bit of extra damage here. The tri lane for bot being uh, the Ogre McGee, Z Freak, and the Gyrocopter. So I was correct. It is the Warlock middle, <coughs> which is very questionable against Resolution here. There's not really too much damage going out the side of Warlock for how much they want to propose here. In fact, Wraithband picked up on Resolution to get that extra little bit of damage out. He's got 52 with five, three three damage coming off the band, two damage coming off of the uh, the Fairy Fire. And uh, Warlock's basically running the same thing. He's at 65. He's at uh, 59. And, uh, yeah, so a lot of damage here. Limp is just trying to heal himself as much as he can here. In fact, reactive armor was specced on the side of uh, Viper here, so it's going to be a little bit difficult, uh, a little more difficult for him to try and get it here. But he needs to be a little bit careful here. Resolution is taking a bit of damage, but he's going to salve out, and he's going to be perfectly fine. Um, Limp wants to get up there and try and deny that, deny that salve. So, for the lanes, we have the Swindles running the Sardar, so he's actually running one of his more appropriate builds. The Sentry Ward actually blocked out the creep spawn here, so they're going to have to deal with it. Swindles are probably understanding that there's going to be a Sentry here. Once they get that last hit, it does get it. And, uh, oh, look at that. That made him get up a little bit, and then that's worth trying. Oh! Um, so he does note that the Sentry's there, and, uh... 
he's gonna he's gonna ask for a D ward eventually here. Uh, meanwhile, in mid, a little bit of aggression coming out again, but not really enough. How did, what did this guy do? Oh, if I press and hold on him, it actually that is amazing. Why haven't I done this before? This is beautiful. That's how they do it. But when does my mouse fade for you guys? Like, if my mouse fades, that'd be amazing. Uh, meanwhile, top again. Just Swindles is getting a little bit shut down too heavily here with uh, Yewar just trying to get that extra uh, potential off of him. Uh, phew, missed that last hit. Oh, you noob. You missed the last hit. Swindles is just cut out in a really bad spot here. Uh, slow going out here. Double slow. Swindles is at 285 move speed, but he did pick up boots first and stuns in secondary. So he's going to be all right. He's got a mango for a little bit of extra regen. He's at two regen. He's going to get caught out by Owie here. He's got to be really careful. Next slow might come out here. It's going to be enough damage. No, it won't because there is a salve and he should be able to heal through it. That doesn't really matter, actually. He uses his last tango and he'll get out of it. Yeah, he will. And instead, he's going to block the next wave and he's going to salve up and he's going to try and go back at it and reset it again. Uh, Bounty Rune picked up for Limp here. He's actually on a bottle, so he's got the immediate advantage against this uh, Viper here. In fact, the Viper is actually fairly, fairly thoroughly shut down here. This uh, in Warlock. Hey, look at I was right. It was one of the, my first build was a one through one. And uh, Resolution just needs to be careful here. He might get uh, Fatal Bonds here with the cannon if he's not too careful, because that will kill him if this Fatal Bond lands correctly. And yeah, he was trying to get that Fatal Bonds out, and he does actually land it. Instead, Ogre Me McGee comes in and tries to drop him out, and uh, well, actually, he won't do that. Uh, Hanskin will go down. No, he won't. Limp actually goes down. Uh, uh, Resolution actually goes down first, and Limp, uh, or Hanskin going down shortly after. Limp actually getting the first blood on the... Uh, on the guy there getting the right click off of one of the creeps that are floating around there. Bounty Rune pinged out on the bottom for the Warlock. So, uh, he is very much in need of that. He's out of bottle charges and can definitely use that little bit of extra mana. In fact, he's going to be getting, getting his Arcane Boots after he probably uses this. And uh, in fact, no, he's got something else coming in. It might be Stat Boots. In fact, it is. There's uh, no, actually, it could be a Midas lineup. He's going to need to drop that tree if he wants to get a hold of it. In fact, Ogre McGee still around here. Night Stalker's on a haste. He's trying to get some stock damage here. Limp has got to be really careful here. Limp is getting way too much damage sappy here. He's not silenced. No, he is silenced out of his thing here. And uh, just just enough that Viper got the next last hit here. Resolution just taking a little bit too much damage here. They can literally deal damage to anyone else here and be able to kill Resolution if they wanted to. Or Bulba even. Um, they won't though. And uh, Warlock will end up... Oh, yeah. <laughs> you gotta love the natural flowing blade on Viper here. Like the having the fact that it's a it's two looks like he's gonna go for a three maybe a three one one build, maybe a two two one build, I don't know. But uh he's just spamming these spells. Warlock's just spamming all these spells on him all the time. And uh, he's got a bottle. He I, it doesn't look like he's going Midas. In fact, Swindles needs to be careful here. He might get caught out by fourteen thirty seven. Actually, just gets a stun off and wastes half of his mana for no reason whatsoever, because uh, Aoi's not going to be able to get anything off either. So, uh, pretty good on the side of uh, D Digital Chaos. Oh my gosh. Well, meanwhile, bottom actually getting a lot of aggro here. Bulba is really getting caught out, but he's got to spin if he wants to, but it took up way too much HP for him. He has yet to even get a strangle, so he's going to have to go back, but... He's been shut down off the lane a little bit. Maybe an accidental stack happened over here. No, it didn't. Actually, it's 55 minutes. One stack came out already. Ogre McGee planning to get a little bit of assault here on this resolution. Might actually get it. The resolution pings it out and actually wants to counterattack on it and use the use the uh, use the Night Stalker to attack him instead. In fact, that's exactly what's going to happen here. Uh, just not not close enough though. Hunter in the night not being able to get there quick enough. Quick enough for that. Uh, Dyer's Courier just tower floating is floating around. Attack. Dyer's top tower taking damage. Dyer's bottom tower taking damage. Yewar's just getting some really uncontested farm here with 3.7, basically 3.8k in the net worth here. And uh, with the gyro at 3.1, being an offlane gyro, uh, getting some crazy good farm. He even has a mango for that extra regen that, like, didn't really look like it was going to be in his favor for, uh, for them whatsoever here. So gyro just getting that extra farm here. Not really much that's going to be able to contest him here and he's just he's just going at it he's not really having too much of a problem here with uh, how he's going to be farming in this bot lane he's doing pretty well there's not really much that'll be able to contest him here so yeah that's that's uh G gyro definitely has the advantage here out of anyone in fact an arrow draws up i think from uh 
the warlock saying, uh, dude, I know you're farming and all, like, you're doing a really good job farming, I really appreciate it, but, uh, we need some help here. And, in fact, Viper actually signals that we're gonna go down there and we're gonna kill you instead, because you're not even doing anything, you're just farming. And, uh, there's no wards seeing him out here, uh, he's gonna get caught out, and, um, looks like that's exactly what's gonna happen here. 1437 drops down, Yawar drops down in the loop, and, uh, he might actually get a counter kill on, on, uh, 1437 here, but it, it doesn't happen. He goes down for 221 gold. Um, what was that, like three ultimates dedicated for that? Yeah, Viper ulti, Viper ulti went down. 1437 used uh, Nightwave, or Void, whatever it's called. Uh, Phoenix dived in. That didn't really Radiance well, didn't really bottom ulti. tower and, is uh, under attack. Spectre did his ult or her ultimate in. So, yeah, I mean, it was, it was pretty worth it. Uh, Bulba's gonna try and pull the wave here. It's not really gonna work. Yawar actually loses Radiance that. Radiance bottom game, tower so is good. under attack. Um, so, you know, they're gonna get this extra farm here. Yawar just having a little bit of extra damage against this. He's gonna come in and try and cash in the wand here. But that extra damage going on on the alley from that split shot, Dyer's way too much damage. Yawar actually is gonna try and go bottom here, but he's gotta be really careful. Ogre McGee running around here. Uh, doesn't see that the DD was actually picked up on him. They're saying, let's go on him. We still got everybody here. Bam, out goes the stun, but it misses completely. The stun goes out. Zebra's actually got to be really careful here. He could be one of the ones to go down here. And, and in fact, will go down here. Really delayed stun coming out by Hanskin here. And uh, that, that should have been that should have been sent sent out immediately so that, that would prevent the Ancient Apparition kill. Or the death of Ancient Apparition. Um, a lot of roaming going out on the side of both teams here for their for their team lineup, that's for sure. And to farm, just getting uh, pretty even with Spectre and uh, Gyrocopter here. Yeah, they're pretty even on farm fights, so I'm not too surprised. Gyrocopter might be going for... I think he's just going to go for a Dominator again. In fact, Jesse's going to try and dive to get this kill here, but it's not going to happen. And he's not even going to try and get some tower damage off either. He doesn't really want to sp uh, spoil the moment for the free farm. Swindles is, uh, looks like he's going for Blink Dagger first at 900 gold. He might actually just be doing Midas instead. Uh, I've seen Midas picked up on Slardar at least four different times now. Almost all four times, actually, by Swindles. And, uh, and, and then he loses. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, not, we'll not talk about the and then he loses part. <laughs> we'll leave that out. Hopefully he doesn't like contact me somehow and be like, You talked about me incorrectly. You thought I was good. Can I like that is sweet. Okay, wait, okay, let me try something here. Okay, no, it doesn't work. I have to click on the portrait. That's cool though. I should I should be doing that more often. That's definitely something that I like in this game. It's just being able to click on the character and then press and hold and then it will follow him around. Yeah, okay. So basically, Limp is trying to get some extra uh, extra kill on this hand on this resolution here, but it's not really going to work because uh, resolution's got enough damage. He's actually got four specs in the reactive skin, and um, he's not going to be able to do him. In fact, he's even got uh, buckler, so he's running around with uh, five to seven on on cast armor, only at the cost of sixty uh, at the cost of uh, ten mana here. Last 25 seconds, and, and it takes 25 seconds to recharge, so he can just cast that as much as he wants, and he's got that extra two bit of armor, which is really good against this slightly physical team here that, uh, in fact, they need to be careful here. Resolution Smoke gets popped on, on the top of the Ogre McGee here, and they're going to try and counter-initiate here. In fact, TP's going out on the side of bottom, 1437 popping ulti, trying to get out quicker. There's nothing that 1437 is going to be able or that, uh... Notice that, uh, that, uh, that uh, complexity is going to really be able to do here to try and counteract the fight here. And so instead, there's all five bottom. Let's just get this tower out of the way so we can get uh, some extra roaming down on the top tower, tower instead. And um, doesn't really matter. He is creeps are taking some serious firepower damage, Dyer's literal fire tower is under from um, the Phoenix here. But it's not really going to be enough. They're going to try and heal up this one creep as much as they can here. Dyer's and yep, goes fortified. down. Um, it's in the deny range. Phoenix is trying to be attack. near it so he can get the, de the deny. He's gonna not Radiant deny it, but instead, is top tower is taking some serious damage here out of the specter, and uh, they really need to get the multicast up for this Ogre McGee here. Otherwise, he's just gonna be kind of pointless until time comes. Yeoar just trying to get some more damage onto the tower. It's just not really gonna work here. In fact, he's he's actually gonna earn a shadow instead of Owie gonna earn a shadow. So we might be seeing some sort of arcane boots picked up for Owie here. Instead, um, Ogre McGee needs to be really careful here. 
there are one to two heroes roaming around here. 1437 is actually out of haste, so bam, there's so much slow going on on the side of Hanskin. He's got 100 move speed. There's no getting out of that one. Viper, Resolution gets the kill, and uh, they're going to go for this top tower, so more, more, be definitely better trades going on the side of the Digital Chaos here. That, that haste actually just ensured that kill completely. In fact, he also had an arcane rune, so... That gave him that little bit Dyer's of extra middle region. Tower is uh, under attack. Gosh, I want that golden doomling. I want a golden doomling. It's a genuine golden doomling. Come on, 1437. What's up with you? It doesn't really matter. Swindles is going to get initiated upon here. He is going to go down. I know there was no way you're going to get out of that TP. He buys another TP. He's getting there, sort of. Actually, no, he actually bought stat boots, so he's not going directly for Blink Dagger. A lot of uh, pings going out here on the side of... Uh, Complexity saying, oh man, we're just getting shot down over here. No, we're not, actually. That was, Dyer's no. middle tower that was is under attack. digital chaos pointing out a lot of areas where there could be some possible destruction here. And uh, they, they see Bulba here. They're going to try for their build this middle tower. They're going to try and get a counter kill on 1437. He is going down here. Phoenix will pop, but everyone's affected by it. So, Hadskin, he's got nothing else to really do. He's going to die anyway. So, two down on the side of Complexity here. In fact, Limpus might get caught out here. Gets caught out. For sure, there's no way that he can actually recover from this. He wasn't able to pop his heal on anyone to counter out the steel chains. And 100 gold goes down to resolution, as well as the Warlock himself going down. So, Dominator Keep dies too, so they might have actually gave, give it a, uh, gave it away that they could be stacking at the moment. And in fact, there's no stack, so it doesn't actually matter. Com uh, complexity needs Swindles needs to be really careful here. He's died a lot in the past already. We don't need you to die some more times. Oh gosh, what is going on today, boys? Uh, Night Stalker, he's casting up the night. Um, everyone's here in the middle here. Uh, Slaughter is actually silenced out, and uh, Swiddle's just getting in, just wrecked him off here. Global call down, just not hitting anyone. It's not really going to pose a certain threat. They know that limps back, and then they got to be really careful here. 1437 and Yewar is going to get out through the side here, and they're going to go back and reset and go back into farming the lanes. Uh, I gotta say, Dota Cinema definitely has the advantage here out of uh, anyone else with uh, just the fact that this Night Stalker is actually proposing so much of a threat with the, the Knight going down pretty early and Ogre McGee having such high spell requirements and everything in order to... Uh, let me just do this. Like, if I were in box, would I get him? No, I'd have to, like, literally select him and stuff. Maybe they'll fix that, too. Because this is nice. I love this. I can just go, and then I don't have to worry about a thing. Um, yeah, so the farm just on the side of the dire here is just top five net worth is three dire heroes. And the dire carry and dire, I guess, semi-carry at this point. Uh, Warlock, I guess, is supposed to be semi-carry. Because Swindles, again, for the millions of millions of times over and over again, it's just getting shut down like... Utmost certainly. Uh, what, I gotta go back down here. There's actually smoke going out on the side of uh, DC down here, and they might be going on here. They do see the handskin, but the handskin popped the smoke, and they're not really going to be able to do anything here. They're going to try and disengage from the fight, but um, at the same time, they're still staying here. They know that they're there. He's walked across that century word about a hundred times already. New vision ward going Radiance down. They're going to have to kill that ward anyway, but it doesn't matter. Spectre ulti goes down. And uh, just in the downside, Deep Freak goes down. Bulba hasn't even passed Ulti yet. He's taking heat to. Global Call Down goes down, but Ulti gets cast. Uh, Swindles trying to get some counter kills here, but the Phoenix Ulti is just way too much damage here. Swindles is actually going to go down from the secondary TP. Goes down, tries the secondary stun. Jesse down at the tier 2 tower. This is looking really bad for complexity here. And uh, I'm starting to feel that this isn't really complexity's game anymore. They're going to try and go for a 16 minute Roshan. There's, this is outstanding how quick and how early that their their feed is coming on here. This Ancient Apparition is not really proposing much of a threat. He's not even level 6 yet. How is he going to be able to defend the rest of the team if he's not even level 6? Meanwhile, you know, Roshan is going down this DD on Yawar, so it's definitely a problem that uh, Complexity is just getting shot down way too much here by Dota Cinema. By DC. And it's, it's just way too much damage going out. They know that they're in Roshan, but they're not really gonna be able to do much. Uh, they're not gonna they can't really get a steal. They can drop it they can drop an ult down. Chessie's gonna do exactly that. Global goes down, aerial goes down, but it's not enough. Uh, Resolution actually picks up the Aegis instead. He casts ulti right before he dies. He's actually getting a lot more damage off of Chessie than most people would expect. Meanwhile, Limp's actually gonna go down to Yewar here with that DD was like the last tick on him. 
1437 dies actually, so that's their first kill for a very long time on the side of Complexity. Complexity is actually about to kill Chessie here, and uh, no, uh, no, other way around. Chessie actually goes down. Resolution gets the uh, shallow grave here, but he's got a dot on him that's not really going to help him here because that that uh, that warlock minion just slowly coming in after him, and you know they're going to get out of it. And again, just another fight that DC had taken to the reins, and they got the they got the initial advantage out of that. All they lost was dar uh, all they lost was the. Um, was the Night Stalker? It was that their first kill in a very long time, and um, you know what about, where's my net worth charts? My net worth charts. Oh, I did something. I did something. I don't know what happened. Is it in one? Oh, there it is. So yeah, there's the difference in experience. It's just like totally skyrocketed on the side of complexity. Complexity just hasn't gotten anything. I mean, an easy example is the fact that the Ancient Apparition is still level six. And the difference in, like, team net worth just totally dropping here. And, uh, what's this last one? Oh, that's all the items one. What's that one? Oh. Oh, that's the total team net worth of golden experience thing. I like that. Nobody actually uses that one. What's that one? Okay, that's not linked to anything. Yeah. Oh. Do that, too. Oh, okay, it's one or the other. Yeah, let's do net worth. That's, that's dumb. Why would I not do the other one? Anyway, uh, doop. so top of the net worth chart is the Spectre. Why do I? Oh, I have the fog on. Top of the net worth chart here is the Spectre. And um, it's just ridiculous. In fact, the Spectre ultimate goes down, goes on the Z Freak here. They tried to kill off the Phoenix. The Phoenix. Uh, where is Phoenix? The Phoenix actually TPs out. And Hanskin uh, is getting pretty low HP here. And uh, they're not going to be able to do much. They got the Ancient Apparition, but Boom was still level 6. Doesn't even matter that he's dead. Yewar, gotta try and get a counter kill on the Swindles here. Swindles is taking too much slow here. He's at 286. Global Cold Down goes down for the defense on the side of Jesse. Owie goes down. There was no way they're going to recover from that. Radiant Phoenix comes in. Phoenix ult is dropped, but there's no way they're going to be able to get it. Jesse goes down. And Limp goes down. Slaughter is actually getting healed, not damaged by Warlock. Limp just too much damage going down, and Bulba is going to be able to face out perfectly fine. And, oh my gosh, Bulba even has a Midas. Uh, AA ball going out. Incoming! Double hit! Bulba is definitely going to go down here. Um, is he? No, he's not. It's a level one, actually. No, yeah, he does go down. Uh, that was a dominating streak. He was trying to get to the end of the end of the road there to try and get his items, but it doesn't really matter because meanwhile, Darkseer or Night Soccer is getting the bottom push down here, and he's going straight into that Aghanim Scepter. So they're definitely seeing that the Aghanim Scepter gem will be on the Radiance on, um, bottom tower is under attack. attack. That is for sure. And uh, you know, just some beautiful kills, beautiful lineups going out the side of DC at the moment. Just how much determination they're having to just absolutely decimate the lanes. In fact, a the beautiful, beautiful Radiance was picked up on the Spectre. Spectre is now in base, just doing the Radiance heal run-up, and uh, ulti will be up. Actually, it's not even level 2 ultimate yet. It's, um, wait, can I just do this? Oh, uh, yeah. It's not even level 2 ultimate, but it's 120... Uh, 120 second cooldown no matter what, and it does pierce magic immunity. Meanwhile, bottom actually, Night Stalker goes down, uh, wasn't able to buy that piece for his, uh, Agonim Scepter. Ice Ball goes out, it's nothing! So, Night Stalker just got caught out in a really bad spot there, died out, and, um, gave Swindles a little bit of farm. They know that the Blink Dagger's out on Swindles now, so they gotta be really careful. They have that little bit of extra initiation for these one-man KOs. In fact, speaking of one-man KOs, there might be one going on to Z-Freak. In fact, that's exactly what happens. Level 7, Z-Freak just goes down and just can't fight anymore. Yewar actually goes down and blinks again onto Swindles, but Swindles ain't gonna be able to get out because there's Radiance on that puppy, and you're going down. Yewar is on a godlike streak. That is beautiful. And, uh, happily, this, this, uh... Happily, Yewar doesn't use the alternate voice, because, God, that is just a terrible voice for, for Yewar, for Spectre. So much. So much. Meanwhile, Top Radiant Tower is actually top getting some extra aggro here, attack. so there's not really too much they're going to be able to do to prevent for this tower. AA Ball might be coming out here trying to defend this tower. In fact, he will send out the AA Ball. 
Warlock Ultimate goes down, trying to get one kill somewhere. And uh, Bulb actually gets clipped in that. Resolution also clipped in it, but he's gonna try and turn and kill Jesse. In fact, that might exactly uh, that might exactly happen here. He's gonna go down to the dots, and down he goes, but it doesn't really matter. Viper Radiant dominating, going down to the Gyrocraptor in uh, Slardark, getting Dazzle for that last hit. So they're starting to get a little bit of comeback team fights here with that Blink Dagger on Radiant's Swindles, just blinking in and being able to attack. disable the team before uh, the team even gets anything going here. Meanwhile, Yewar just the bottom trying to push out this tower here. Attack. He's gonna start actually right-clicking it with that 91, 92 damage. Attack. Good grief, 65 damage total on that fortified. thing there. Um, he's probably not gonna be able to get this tower here. They're gonna clean out the top tower and then leave almost immediately. Can I do it with, like, the Warlock minion? Oh my gosh, I can do it with the Warlock minion. tower has um, Radiant's bottom tower GB's is going out to bottom. Bottom. Uh, pretty low HP, not deniable though. Uh, Z Freak is getting a little bit of better kills here, but he's still just getting denied out almost instantly here. Bulba trying to defend this top tower from Swindles. Dot damage goes out, and he's gonna try and secure, but he doesn't ma uh, doesn't matter because he forgot to disengage. Dot goes out onto Bulba here, but it doesn't matter because Bulba going down pops down ultimate. Yeah, Swindles is not gonna be able to get out of this one here. Bulba emerges perfectly fine. Uh, Ice Ball going in, not gonna land. In fact, no, Bulba's walking back into it. Oh. Ho, 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 ho. Just barely misses it. Just barely misses it. Um, Century Ward apparently was being pinged out by somebody down into here. Bulba just trying to find out why they have so much detection. Why they're able to see people. Why they why are they able to see us? Uh, doesn't really matter though. Bot Tower is going down here. Uh, free Fire Spectral Dagger. And uh, Limp doesn't have ultimate here. But uh, Hanskin blinks in, tries to defend the tower. But the tower is not in denial range. It's actually two away. Now it's in denial range. Yep, there it is. And uh, he pops ultimate to try and scare off the rest of the creeps here, but it doesn't really matter actually. He went top to try and kill Chessie. But Chessie's gonna be able to TP out here because of the beautiful stun Radiant's that came out from somebody. Tower I don't know under who attack. Them. Radiant's where they bottom them. Tower but it doesn't matter, bottom tower goes down to the dazzle. And uh Viper, they're gonna come in and try and get this middle tower here. Dragonlance actually picked up on Viper. I haven't really talked much about the item pickups here. I guess I could do that now that I need to which buttons I'm pressing. So the, we have the Blink Dagger, obviously, that's on the Swindles, and then the Agonum Scepter immediately picked up for Limp, despite not having uh, too much of a team fight capability. Same build as last time for Chessie, he's going to probably go into that Manta style, and then Z Freak just getting shut down a lot. Ogre McGee, you know, Invisible Detection. 1437 going for that Global Gem Communication ability. Bulba just going for genericness. And then Owie picking up more words. Resolution. Going for that, for going for a pretty crazy uh, early termination build with that uh, mechanism, with a Y, with a Dragon Lance. I mean, that extra range just gives them way too much potential here. And then Yewar, just you know, Radiance going into Manta style, probably into the Fusil Blade. And um, yeah, we'll see how that's going. I gotta scratch the bottom of my hand for some reason; it itches a lot. And uh, Blink Dagger actually blinking out to here. It's gonna catch Resolution. Resolution doesn't look like he's in a safe place, but it doesn't really matter. Phoenix actually coming in. Trying to drop down some teamfight conversation here, and that's exactly what's going to happen here. But it doesn't really matter. Warlock minion drops down right on top of the bird here. The bird does die, but um, it doesn't really matter. 1437 actually kills out the gyrocopter still. 1437 getting chased pretty heavily here, but Yewar also getting chased pretty heavily here. The courier's about to get sniped. They got to be really careful with that courier line up there. And um, you know, 1437 uh, probably got his Agadem Scepter just floating around on that courier. He doesn't really want that to be shot out right now. In fact, uh, there it goes. Agadem Scepter picked up, and out goes the courier. It's got low, no net worth, but little to no health on it. That gold, that that gold uh, Doomling got it. That's really important, guys. I mean, look at that. It's a gold Doomling. Why would you want to kill something so beautiful? Radiant Stop so Tower is under attack. Doomling, but they cost like 40 bucks. I can probably get it. I'll get a fixed paycheck. Dyer's middle tower Still is under anything, attack. Um, Resolution needs to be careful with that TP there. Attack. He might actually. Uh, no, he's not. Uh, the Warlock Minions are going to expire before he actually gets the Never mind, he gets that 75 gold off of that uh, minion there. And uh, Yewar, he's got invis, but the Radiance is still on, so he's giving away his position here. They're saying, uh, Bulba, uh, Swindles is up here, and uh, we could possibly get something here. Uh, Ward was pinged out. Uh, they were like, hey, I know there's a Ward here. I saw it. They had one, they placed it. I don't have a gem yet, but I saw it and they placed it. And uh, they're just gonna try and get some necessary damage here on uh, some of the early game here. Really odd place to place the Century Ward, actually. I'm pretty sure that will deward the camp. No, it won't. Okay, we're good. 
Um, ooh, ooh. 1437, you know, Aghanim Scepter going pretty well here. The Spectre, the Spectre, the Spectre. Um, definitely looks like he's going into that uh, Manta style as well. BKB picked up again on uh, the Gyrocopter here, which um, I don't really... No, okay. I guess that's well justified. Uh, Night Stalker Ultimate cast down in the middle here, so they're trying to maybe get some counter initiation fight over here, but they have Global Vision now, thanks to 1437 Global Aerial Vision. So they're going to try and be in the most kind of douchey spot they could so they 1437 can get a beautiful kill off of here. And they're saying, just go on the, go on the tower. Um, it's just Jesse. You can, you can you can scare him. Um, Jesse does have enough attack speed if they wanted to take out the Phoenix Ball again. 1437 actually might get cut out here. It doesn't really matter. Phoenix ulti getting, uh, Spectre ulti getting cast down here. Actually just TP's into the direct middle of the fight so they can try and get Radiant this tower. tower. And that's exactly what's going to happen here. They're going to try and get this tower. But Stun Ball going out on the Yawar. Not going to happen. And uh, everyone emerges out perfectly fine. Phoenix actually drops Radiant's down a, a dot with four under different attack. people here. Um, Resolution, gotta be really careful here. He might get cut out, might not. In fact, they're gonna turn around and try to fight. The Swindle's just taking way too much damage here. Warlock Ultimate goes down. Bulba has not yet used Ultimate. He's gonna try and dive and use it now, and he actually doesn't get it off. It was mid-cast, I saw it. Resolution just, oh my gosh, just three kills going down the way of the enemy team right now. 1437, direct hit by the Ice Ball. Can't get the cast off. And uh, no matter what, uh, he's gonna die here from uh, the from the rocket. There's gonna be not much that's gonna be able to prevent him from dying from this. And uh, he's gonna Dyer's buy as many TPs as he can. No, attack. he won't. He's actually no, he's, he's dead. <laughs> he's dead. Uh, Spectre just farming. You know, Dyer's they got the, they got the kill that they were looking attack. for. It was the Slardar apparently, or I don't know what kill they got there. Because I didn't click on the, the fight preview thing quick enough. Dyer's and uh, they're just getting some more damage. Attack. They're not really gonna be able to. <sighs> not gonna be able to do much to prevent this. Gem. Dyer's top finally picked up on the Night Stalker attack. here, so they have the global detection aerial vision. And Lynch Dyer's trying to deal damage to the top tower. Uh, fortification actually going out with little no creeps floating on the towers attack. here. So. Um. You know, Yewar just at 15k net worth at the moment, top top net worth. He's got the Manta style now at 17, at uh, level 17 at minute 29 and a half. And um, you know, it's just just pretty good so far. Attack. Pretty pretty well farmed. Not really much you can really complain about here. Uh, by the way, guys, just once again letting you know, this is Scourge. This is Party PD from Scourge Gaming, obviously because it'll be on the Scourge Gaming channel. Uh, please sub to us. We are trying to get 100 subscribers. I'll let you know at the end of this game. Um, I'll let you know again at the end of this game. Please sub to us. We need 100 subscribers and or more. Yada yada yada. Thank you very much. And we're going to go back into the game here. Rashawn, you know, it's going to go down to Yewar here. They have no they have no idea that this is happening here. Um, the creep, the scout creep goes out here. It's actually pretty fast at 350 move speed. They know that he's in there. Yeah, they know that they know that they went in and they weren't gonna bait the ice ball into it. They were looking at it though. They were looking at baiting that ice ball. In fact, um, switched around here instead of going for that manta style. It's picked up a. I think you have 16 armor. Beast. Oh, the ice armor. Okay. What happens when I go? Oh gosh, that's a big difference. Um, Roshan still goes down. The Aegis picked up on resolution actually. Which uh, I find is a very questionable pick. Uh, Manta style recipe picked up on Viper. In fact, the courier is going to be able to bring that in and hopefully get the uh, the rest here. Yeah, the ultimate orb picked up on that. The double smoke again, I think, on top of uh, this team here. But Viper coming in, going straight on the deep freak. Uh, Revolution taking way too much damage here. He got directed hit by the ice ball field almost immediately. Wouldn't work it. He's getting. He's gonna try and kill Swindles here, but it's not working. He's. That, there, there he goes. Um, Phoenix Bird goes down, but it's still three down on the side of complexity here. Uh, but Yawar is actually gonna go down here as well. But Night Stalker gets the Slardar. Uh, Yawar's in a really odd position here, but goes down. Jesse. Jesse also gonna go down here. That's a full five man wipe. Oh, it's a five-man wipe on the side of complexity here, and they're gonna try and get some extra pushing time in here. In fact, that's exactly what they're gonna notify with uh, where the warlock golems should be going here. And they're just gonna slow out the warlock golems. The regents is way too much for them. 
And uh, hopefully they're gonna try and deny it to this creep. And that's not gonna happen. Hunter Gold going to wave resolution. 200 gold actually. I'm pretty sure he got that last uh, guy as well. But resolution, you know, Aegis was popped, but still he managed to get all the kills. Um, 1437 needs to be careful here, and he actually scouts out the ball ahead of time because of that global vision. And uh, I'm pretty sure you can actually see the paraflare before it comes. So, so far so good. There's um, little to no things actually happening here. Uh, Bulba, he's got the Midas again. The main style picked up on the Viper since he was the sole survivor of that team fight. And, uh, well, I mean, he already had it anyway. That Dragon Lance is just really beautiful for Viper. Um, that extra damage that he can do through the Dragon Lance range and everything like that is just really good. I've seen some Dragon Lance snipers in the past couple days. It's been really annoying to fight against them, but I played Omni Knight in my last three ranked games and won every last three. No, I didn't. I was only two ranked games and I won the last one still. But, um, you know, just gonna try and get some counter on farm here, trying to. But, uh, meanwhile, you know, just counter farm going out here. Slaughter trying to go for the BKB. Actually, has 2.6k. Might be going yes and why. Because that's how I build my Slaughter. Yes and why. And I still, I still do BKB. But, you know. S and Y. Who doesn't love an S and Y on your slug? That guy. Probably that guy. So, let's jump over to items here. Let's see how everyone's doing here. Uh, Swindles, obviously, he's got a Blink Dagger, possibly going into BKB. Henskin, going for that Aghanim Scepter here. I can't actually select him through that way. That's really annoying. Ogre McGee going in for the Scepter, and in fact, there's a smoke in the bottom lane, gets all five, and they're going to try and go up the mid lane, maybe go to bot here and try and get a counter kill. I keep on moving my desk because I use my bottom part as a footrest. Move that again. Cool. So they're going to try and go for the little roam here instead. I'm going to put this down now that this is happening, but they're going to like be like, let's go this way. There might be somebody down here, and they gave, they've given up, actually. Slaughter Speed's going out, and they're going to do some warding. And, uh, you know, they're all turtled up over here. Why do I have a bowling blade? What the heck? Um, and they're all just, uh, DC, just hanging out in the base. I mean, they could get away with not being in the base, but they're just in the base, just hanging out at the moment. They, like, they we, we know that you guys are smoked, so we're going to let that slide here. DKB picked up on the Slardar as that, as that, uh, strength piece I was talking about. In chat version, maybe trying to go for that, uh, Aghanim Scepter now. Chessy, uh, did, is still on the S and Y, still trying to figure out what the heck he's going to pick next. Hanskin, um, a little, yeah, a little over half of the Aghanim Scepter, and then Limp, he's got Aghanim Scepter refresh, so that double team fight plus a Midas, actually, that double team fight plus double Midas is actually going to be really good for him, because he's going to be able to drop the gold down pretty quickly here. Night Stalker, he's got a gem, he's got a Vladimir's now as well, and he's just running really fast here. I, I will actually have to use this method to, ch to chase him. But he's, he's, he's loading up a lot of damage here, and, uh, you know, or a lot of uh, capability here, and he's just running around, he's a global ward. That's the best thing about a Night Stalker, is just, like, if you think the Night Stalker is not really going to be able to do much in the game, like, this is the best build for the Night Stalker, basically. If you think that Night Stalker is not really going to be able to propose much of an initial threat here for, like, I want to go and kill you in the middle of the day kind of thing, it's like, just have him carry the the gem and have him put a, a, an Aghanim Scepter on. It's just one of the best builds I've seen for a Night Stalker within the past, like, couple days for Pro Scene. And, um... I mean, what, his ultimate comes off almost all the time. He can cast his ultimate whenever he wants to. I don't think it actually messes up the clock anymore, because at 36 minutes, it should, should still go to darkness here. Uh, meanwhile, they're going to try and try and push up this mid here. An illusion... No, real one. Real one. Um, no ulti going up. Uh, there is an ult on Yewar at the moment, but they're going to not actually get that rocket. That's an extra Radiant's 200 something damage. That could have been a void. That mid tower is definitely going to go down here. No fortification needed. And uh, Smoke actually picked up her, uh, Night Stalker at the moment. And uh, they're going to do exactly that. They're going to Smoke and, and uh, maybe go back into Roche. Uh, but Roche is not up. Uh, actually, it's not even past the normal time for Roche respawn. So they're gonna try and they're gonna try and wrap around here, but um, Owie and yeah, Howie and uh, and uh, yeah, no, there's the wrap around actually. So 1437 trying to jump in that BKB not really helping Swindles here because the resolution popping the ulti directly on the top of them. But Warlock goes down, Hanskin definitely goes down. Phoenix ult is not even down yet, but everyone's pretty much out. Chessie's gonna get caught out here as well. That's three kills going down the side of Complexity and. 1437, you're going to try and look for more here. They're not going to be able to find the Slardar. He's actually got a double damage and uh, still on max attack speed here. 
So they're gonna try and get the bottom, the miss, this mid tower, and then they're gonna say, let's go to bottom and finish off the rest here. And uh, that's exactly what's gonna happen. The fusal blade was actually picked up on Spectre, which was probably the best thing that just took out one of those minions that Warlock might have summoned. No, he didn't actually summon anything. He was killed and silenced almost immediately. No fortification Radiant's needed for the middle, middle tower, tower, and they're gonna go straight fallen. for this tier, for this uh, tier three here, tier four, tier four, tier three. Those Radiant's are middle tower is under attack. Uh, they need to be a little bit Radiant's careful here. Swindle still has a DD. Five. He's gonna try and get some damage off of this gyrocopter. Back up, blink dagger is still available, but he's silenced out, and they're going to try and just get as much base damage as they can to this tower using these Viper illusions. But Viper actually has some sort of evasion, or did he just miss on purpose? How did he miss? How did he miss? Hang on. Hang on. Does Night Stalker Night Thing have a mischance? There's a... There's a... There's a mischance on Crippling Fear? Oh my gosh, I haven't played Night Stalker in ages. Obviously, if there's a mischance on Crippling Fear... Good grief, yeah, I haven't done Night Stalker in ages. There's a mischance for crippling fear. Alright, whatever. We'll, we'll have to worry about that later. Ooh, why? It's like, chase the mouse. 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 Hey, look at that. Illusion rune. You didn't get it. There's no rush up. Might be a long respawn. <laughs> Whatever. Um, back to items that I never discussed. So, the Blink Dagger and BKB. Blink, uh, BKB is on nine charges here. The Warlock is at his refresher and... Oh, I have his refresher word. I, oh, that'd be funny if I could move his item. Um, an Aghanim Scepter here with uh, Chessy running the Monkey King Bar build. Going for that again. And then uh, Z Freak, just you know, he's he's kind of shut down here. He's not going to be able to get too much. In fact, he doesn't have that much. But at least he's a higher level than uh, the ancient apparition that last game. Level uh, he was level 11 at no no actually he's lower level than he was last or er, the last game's ancient apparition. And they won. Radiance <laughs> bottom tower um, is under attack. Um, does have a scepter now, so they can rely on that double up stun. And in fact, they're going to do a smoke down into mid here. AC Radiant's being built on the side of resolution. Attack. And um. You know, there's also the Shiva's Guard on Bulba, and the Diffusal Blade still on Yewar. You know, there's still a lot Radiant's of stuff that's going to be able to be done here. More attack. wards picked up on the side of this Dazzle. But, um, you know, they're going to try and get a kill off of this uh, roaming top here at the moment, but Radiant's not really going to be able to happen here. Under attack. So, 2.2k uh, on the side of Slardar at the moment. Still three point or 2.3k for... or 23k net worth on the, um, on the Spectre here. I thought my computer froze. And he's actually going to go for Scotty. He might actually have the Scotty. He does actually have the Scotty. He forgot the Venom Orb. And uh, he's going to go into the Roche. Um, there's nothing they can really do to prevent this. They're, most of them smoked up the top. So they're going to they're gonna do their best to try and kill off the uh, Roche on here. They're, like, they're all in this area. You guys are good and golden. And uh, the the is going to be picked up on Yewar actually. He's going to go towards resolution for the ring of Akula. And um, you can actually sell the ring and get an AC if you want to. Shadow's also on the ground for um, Yewar. Picks up the cheese, Scotty. He's going to go sell off the rest of the stuff. He's going to be able to get the AC now um, on uh, Viper here. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Um, they're going to send out the courier to get the... Hyperstone, and that's what's going to happen. Resolution's going to pick up this AC. Dyer's Meanwhile, on top, Night Soccer scouts out that they see the uh, other guy here. Big lag spike because of that ultimate coming in. But Swindles dedicates a BKB charge to try and get out, but he's just jump. Yewar's just jumping around. Everybody TP'd out. Pretty much everyone TP'd out there. Gyrocopter wasn't anywhere near the fight, but everyone TP'd out as soon as that ultimate was dedicated. And the only one to fall was Swindles just taking it way too deep. And he actually, oh no, he did have a TP. Um, Limp getting caught out here. Glimmer Cape goes down on him, but he's not going to be able to, oh no, most of the damage is deterred. So, Swindles, you know, just getting that getting that extra heal out. Radiant and um, tower is trying to survive attack. until the Slaughter gets back. They're going to sacrifice this top tower in exchange of that eventually the Slaughter comes Radiant back part. Top tower and um, just, just so much damage on the side of Spectre going out here with 180, 115 with with Diffusal, with the Manta style, and with Scotty. It's just so much, so much aggro here. They're gonna send one Spectre Illusion to go to 
Uh, they're gonna send him actually stay in the middle here. And uh, he's just gonna get that extra gold. Uh, gyro. They shout out that the Monkey King bar is out on the Gyro now, so they gotta be a little bit careful because uh, now the AWR can actually die here for real. Uh, he does have cheese. The re a re there's a regen on the ground. Probably gonna go towards not the next doctor actually, and it's gonna go towards the Owie. And uh, Owie's got five century wards, and he's got 2.1k net on him at the moment, and he might be doing something with it, might not. But it doesn't really matter. The ancient apparition is just picking up more wards, just not even caring about Agon Scepter. Actually, he has stat boots instead of arcanes to, uh, you know, it's just farm. It's not really much that they can really do here. He's on the bottom of the net worth of 3.5k with the Night Stalker being number 6 at the moment with only, like, you're really carrying an Agatham Scepter, Gem, and just everything else that's the end of the world here. He actually still has his technical dwelling blade, so if he finds wards, there is. They're, they're definitely going down. But uh, on the downside, you know, Night Stalker can easily get caught out here and just, and just get clipped and died. Just die. So they gotta be really careful with where they put 1437. And uh what time is it? Dang, it's 106. I haven't even gotten food yet. Uh Limp's getting scouted out here by 1437. They might actually go on him, but Limp's uh no, he's got some friends nearby, so he's gonna actually night goes down, so that's probably why they disengaged that. Um maybe Octarine Core going out for Night Stalker for that quicker refresh, uh probably to take up the wand. Most likely the wand. And, um, you know, they're just gonna continue to defend here. It's, a, it's definitely a ratting game for the side of complexity here. With, uh, this gyrocopter just not really carrying enough damage here, or enough counter initiation here. Swindle's just still trying to get some extra towers here. It does actually get it, and, uh, blinks out, and he's gonna TP back to the base. So, another tower goes down. Night Stalker recasts the Night Ultimate, and he's gonna try and go for some gem searching here or for some uh, rune searching here, but they see 1437 here, so they know that there could be a possible kill chance off of here. The um, silence goes down, 1437 gets a good whiff of that baseball, and uh, they're going to try and go on 1437 here, but the problem is 1437 has nearly global vision here, so they're not really going to be able to get much here. In fact, Hanskin might be going down, because, you know, this is going to side. It doesn't really matter. Counter team fight going down. Ice Lord going straight on the resolution, not actually going to do anything to help him. And uh, the secondary Warlock ulti was popped down on nothing. Yewar goes down, the the Phoenix ult was popped, but there's just too many heroes nearby. It's going to go down, and Chessie actually goes down to Viper. And uh, Resolution goes down to 1437, just needs to get out of here. They're not really going to be able to get too much of a fight off of this. With all those Warlock minions up, there was nothing that they could really do. Yewar was just destroyed almost immediately. He wasn't able to disable any of them. And on top of that, you know, just, just everyone just started dying. Looks like... Complexity is going to be showing a little bit of a uh, little bit of a fighting chance here, with uh, this warlock just going straight refresher dump and just dump, dump and just dump, and just dump. I was going to say dump ulti on him, but no, nah, I just and just dump. Cause I'm smart like that, guys. I just and just dump. Uh, Night Stock ulti recasted. They're going to try and look for hopefully some wards here. They're saying go down in the middle, see if there's anything there. Dyer's middle tower and, um, is under attack. Or you know defend our towers that are getting hit by warlock golems. Uh, you never know. You can do whatever you want, brother. And they're like, oh, block the next wave of creeps. Okay. Yeah, I'll block the next wave of creeps. Sounds good. And, um, Swindles is actually pinging out that he is there. Speaking of Swindles, he's on a Vladimir as well with his PKB. He's still finished attack. up. A pretty low charge. Seven, actually. And, uh, Bot, you know, meanwhile, there's no Mega Rat, there's no Mega Creeps going up anywhere in any lane, but it's just like Bot is pretty much having that problem. Do you think he's just lacking the ability to get last hits? That's pretty much what's happening. It's a CS 27 and 3, and he's been. He's gotten one kill, but he's assisted in 10 of them. Um, Shiva's Guard picked up on the side of Warlock, so that's his survivability item with all that extra armor. What is that? 14? 15 extra armor. A Basher picked up on the Spectre here, so this, this late game is definitely a late game. Oh, and I wanted to get food, because my mouth is actually watering pretty heavily right now. There we go. Wait, I have water. Let me do it. They just found out that there's a basher on the on Yewar here, and Yewar just goes down and kills two people at the same uh, at the same exact time here. And uh, does that have to be with a chosen haunt? Okay, so it has to be with a haunt. 
So they're gonna try and go for this uh, mid tower aggression here with uh, Slardar. Still has buyback. They're trying to force out that buyback. They know that it's there. And uh, they know that the Monkey King Bar is still on Chessy here, so you gotta be really careful. In fact, they're gonna try and get some serious damage on here, but the split was still passed it onto the on the illusion, so just taking a lot of massive damage here. Tower's almost in deny range, but they would never deny a tier tower, uh, tier three tower. Yewar, just just they're just trying to get some split pushing in here, and that's exactly what's gonna happen. Um, the global cooldown, the global call down goes down, but it's not really gonna be able to. Yewar gets hit by both of them. 167 move speed, that is just brutal. And then, you know, they're not going to be able to do much. Viper gets the tower, uh, blocks out the Hanskin cast, but there's just so much magic damage still going out on Hanskin here. Just through the illusions! Good grief! They're going to go, they're going to start working on this tower here. 18 seconds left on the Slaughter. Can they wait and sacrifice the barracks to, for that 14 seconds, 10 seconds left on the cooldown here? For the res uh, for their uh, for their guy here, then that's exactly what's going to happen here. Uh, uh, the fortification actually goes out instead, so that will definitely block out the fact that the Slardar was not up yet. The range racks definitely go down. I can't stress enough how much my team does not actually focus those range racks, but it doesn't really matter. It's not the end of the world here. Um, bam! Rocket hits for 310 damage. Based rune pinged out to the bottom here. Roshan is not yet up. In fact, it looks like it's the long respawn. Actually, we don't know yet. It's gonna be in a couple seconds here. In fact, it is the long respawn. Two minutes. It's the second. To, it's the second to long respawn. So yeah, two minutes for that respawn to happen. And 14:37, he finds it, and he's like, yeah, it's long respawn. Oh, by the way, I have a side device. So 14:37, just rocking some crazy good items here. A8, chucking a ball to figure out something too. And it is not, Rashawn is not open for business today. So, fortune. Phoenix, he's got his Shivas, uh, her Shivas, is Shivas? I don't care anymore. And um, has a Yules now as well to try and disable any particular people in the team fight. The Dazzle uh, has a Glimmer Cape as well. Owie, maybe it looks like he's going for a Refresher. Possibly, or a Lincoln Sphere. Who knows, maybe a Lincoln Sphere. Probably a Lincoln Sphere. Because there's already a Sheep. Viper. Um, you know, he's got his AC, he's kind of full slotted, kind of not, he could turn those, uh, he could turn that mech into, uh, either an S and Y, or he could turn it into, like, Guardian Greaves, and, uh, drop his normal boots for travels, and then he'd be done. He'd be solid. He'd be solid. And lastly, Spectre, he's, she's basically full slotted, just needs to drop those boots for boots to travel, and, uh, we're good to go. So, yeah, everyone's looking pretty heavily farmed here. They're gonna try and smoke out into the bottom here, there's no wards that'll detect that smoke. So, um, Lotus Orb actually picked up on Owie, so that, that's, I, I can actually agree with that. It was either Lincoln Sphere or Lotus Orb, and I can definitely see how Lotus Orb will be that uh, determining factor here with Ogre McGee just being able to land two or three suns at a time. Speaking of which, Smoke going out in the middle here, not actually scouted out. They're going to try and wrap around uh, the Courier, just sitting in the Roshan, so they might be sacrificing the Courier here if um, they don't do anything about whatever this random aggression is that's going out. Uh, all five heroes are bottom at the moment. There's no smoke on any hero to uh, try and get some aggression here, and uh, they're gonna they're gonna do exactly that. They actually walk over the wards, and um, courier. They didn't see him. Uh, Roshan's up though, so the courier's just sitting in there, and they're like, "Oh guys, check it out. The Roshan's up. Zephyr's gonna try and get a kill on that courier." They don't actually see the courier. So they gotta be really careful here. There's an easy team fight that could come off of this on the side of DC here. And um, they gotta be really careful. Out goes the haunt, and then they're gonna try and TP in and steal that rope, uh, steal that steal that Aegis. Uh, they don't get it, Stardar gets it. Meanwhile, just directly under the pit, everyone's starting to die. Viper killing off the ancient apparition, not really much of a fight here. They gave E pop down on them, the uh, the ball dropped down off the Phoenix. They are trying to get some damage on here. Sound, are you serious? Yeah, we're trying to get some damage off of here. Resolution just we're getting cut out again. It's just gonna get dragged on, but it doesn't really matter. He's got the shallow grave, and it's not really gonna do much. Creep's just going out here. <laughs> just getting wailed on the air here. And um, Owie couldn't see out in Glimmer Cape, so he's perfectly fine. And Spectre going out too. I'm gonna mute these this microphone. One second. Radiance Bottom Tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant's middle barracks are under attack.
Sorry about that guys, I don't want you to have the beeping sound stuck in the whole part of the recording here. But as you can see, there's an AC picked up on Swindles finally, so there's a little bit of extra durability going out for this Slardar here. There's a cheese actually dropped inside the base here, and there's also a gem on the ground. Uh, because the Night Soccer died? Who died? Why was there a gem on the ground? What the crap? They were like, send a courier to the pit. There's a cheese and a gem in there. And for some reason, no one has yet to find out that they're in there. Uh, nope, Courier's going out to the to the pit here. And it uh, looks like they're going to end up getting the uh, resource out of that pit first. And uh, yeah, that, that's exactly what's happening. Speed goes in. Cheese grabbed. Gem grabbed. Bingo, bango, bongo. That's just pretty sad, in all honesty. And uh, they're going to try and smoke down into this middle here and try to get a counter out team fight here. But, you know, it's not really going to work because... Um, they have global vision, they see Limp, they stun out Limp, ultimate goes down here, but 1437 just taking way too much damage here, it's definitely gonna go down here, and uh, the gems on the ground, Warlock buys back, travels back in, and uh, not really gonna be able to do much resolution, ultimate goes down on the side for Swindles, Swindles is gonna go down here, because uh, that dot damage is gonna clip him right on the end here, so Age is expired, Chessie goes down as well, uh, there's a buyback on Chessie, and there's a buyback on, uh, on, um, a Slardar if he actually dies out here, but gems on the ground, there's no way they can actually recover that gem. Bulba, not really going to be able to do much. Lincoln Sphere, uh, or, uh, that thing. Lotus Orb being popped down. Resolution actually kills Ogre McGee here, and, um, it's really bad because Resolution going down too. There's no buyback for, uh, there's no buyback on the... What? Oh, that was Gyro's pocket. Um, Cheese picked up on Gyro, Ogre McGee doing buyback, so this is a full, let's go push down middle and end this dang thing, because we're not going to be able to get anything done with, um, with everyone still down here, so they're like, yeah, let's just go finish this, Forlock actually has his refreshed and refreshed his ultimate, Biker buyback is still okay, we can still fight through this, Dark, uh, Dark Star, Night Stalker is not up, he doesn't have a gem, we can easily fight this, we have another ultimate, we have the initiation. Required. Let's Dyer's focus up these small barracks. No, let's, let's go for the mega barracks. Let's go for the ra melee barracks first. Jesse just taking way too much damage from uh, the all this all this damage, just all the damage. And then Jesse uh, goes for satanic pickup here, trying to heal up. Might have been a little bit too preemptive there, and uh, they're gonna back off. They're gonna back off. They almost had it. They got the tower. They got the advantage they wanted to, and they took out the tower. At what cost, though? There was at least plenty of buybacks that went out here. Swindles just he's got a moon shard. He's he's hitting like a poop. He's hitting like a piece of poop. They're gonna try and re-smoke, possibly go on this um go on the the floaters here. And uh 1437 running out to go find someone. In fact, that's exactly what happens here. Spectre in a really bad spot here, just stunned out completely, not really being able to do much. Yewar going down. There's a buyback on Yewar, but that's it. Resolution and buyback does actually happen, but there's no way that they're going to be able to get a fight off of this with Yewar still getting in there. Slardar dies once again, so the Slardar is definitely going down for these trades. And uh, this buyback may be a little bit not needed on the side of Spectre here. The Roche just won't even be up for a long time anyway. And uh, Ogre McGee, TP's out. There's a courier just floating around. We're going to try and recover that gem, and uh, that's not what's going to happen. Gem of Suicide dropped uh, on the ground randomly. Where'd that even come from? Where did that even come from? Whose courier has what? Does that have a gem in it? No, it doesn't. Who has a gem? One gem? One gem. Bird? Oh, where's the other gem? Who has the other gem? Is there a gem in the base? Is there a gem on the courier? There's two gems on that courier. Okay, so there's one gem. There's three gems on the plane. There's three gems on the plane. And, uh, you know, Fiber's dead. That's the illusion of Fiber. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, Phoenix, you know, it's kind of full slot. It still has the Midas. You could drop it for, you know, something useful. Maybe. Maybe you could drop it for something useful. Who knows? Who knows? Boots Travel, finally picked up on the Warlock here, and uh, that's pretty much full slot for Warlock. Actually, you know, he can drop his boots and probably get a Lotus Orb himself, actually. But it'd actually not be that bad of a decision. 
This, this semi core Warlock is definitely showing this uh, late game carry potential here. Just dealing some massive damage here. Not to mention Swindles. Finally loading enough attack speed here. With uh, AC and Moonshard. It's just hitting like a truck. Well, trucks don't hit that fast. He's hitting like a Corvette, pretty much. And uh, he's rocking at like... 36 base armor like I've like of recently a lot of games have been being like let's build up armor on our heroes like armor apparently has been like the the top thing in this game at the moment which is why I've seen a lot of Omni Knights played in uh, in normal play nowadays but again we're not in normal play we are not in normal play um, they suspect that they were smoked they're gonna try and look for them in the in the pit here. They're gonna let the mid get pushed in pretty heavily here and the uh, haunt is available. If they wanted to they can haunt and find everyone. But no one's there for a team fight and they're using haunt for team fights so far. So not really much they're gonna be able to do here with this. In fact, bottom's being pushed in by Owie here. He's got one raw TP. And uh, you know, it's, it's uh, 17 armor. 17 armor. A lot of armor actually on the side of you know, everyone. Because, I mean, what? The Spectre has 24 default of armor with no boosted. Which means, in a heartbeat, if Ali wanted to, he could drop down his his ultimate and get an initial 15 extra armor. Which is beautiful for the Spectre. But on the downside, the Spectre keeps on dying here. Just, just almost, I want to say inadvertently, but he's not dying inadvertently. He's just dying. This is extremely difficult for them because, you know... This Spectre was supposed to be their... Hello. The Spectre was supposed to be their end game farm here, but it's not actually working out for them. And they're gonna try and get this mid this mid once again. This will be the, the third time in a row here after doing the reset about four times, basically. So they reset four times, and they tried to actually get it three times in a row here. But Owie's down on bottom, so they're not going to really be able to get too much going in here. But Swindles is just absolutely decimating with the amount of attack speed he has. They're not really going to be able to do much with this defense here. And uh, armor goes down onto the... onto the... Uh, onto the... onto the... onto the... radiant here. They're just going to keep on going on these racks here. They're, they're trying their best to ward off everybody. Jesse has a cheese and they know that he that he does. And they're just trying to bait out the cheese usage here. And they're gonna reset. Of course. Oh hopefully they're gonna we're gonna do it this time. Sixty minutes. I wanted to end a while ago. Are we gonna do it? They're gonna they're gonna try and do it. They're gonna do it. No, they're not doing it. They so pop out the fortification, actually. So that's something that's good worth for the baiting. And they're still just not gonna be able to do it. Jesse still has cheese. Warlock has plenty of mana to cast his heal onto the on Jesse, and it's just yeah, we're gonna be here for a little while here. I was really hoping we could finish this quicker so I could actually play this game. Oh, here we go. Possible initiation. Resolution jumping in. And out comes uh, 1437 just dropping down. It doesn't really matter. Each of apparition dropping ultimate attack. down. Lip trying to get the Warlock ultimate down, and it is gonna occur. But Bulba just popping down the ultimate here. And looks like for this, it's complexity that's actually gonna lose more of the initial fight here. Chessy going down. There's two buybacks available. But it's not going to be enough. In fact, Warlock Golem is trying to whittle down what's left. It doesn't really matter. On the offhand, there How is uh, Owie, or 1437, actually dropping down Orca attack. McGee. It's a five-man team wipe on the side of Complexity. And DC, you need to, take, need to take this advantage, whether it's Roshan or it's going straight down to the middle to finish the game. And by the looks of it, they're just going to go straight to the Roshan and try to get a Roshan attempt here. But the Gyro did buy back, and they know that they're going to be in Roshan. So Gyro's gonna try and make his way back over there. Meanwhile, Refresher is actually picked up on the side of Phoenix here, which is, uh, I guess, a very detrimental pick. I guess, uh, you know, if he actually lives through the first uh, Spectre Orb, then I guess he can actually do it the second time if he wants. But he has yet to live through the first, through the first Orb. Light. 
All right, so now they're going to try and take this counter attempt on bottom here, and uh, that's exactly what's going to happen here. I mean, there's they can still do the buyback if they wanted to on, on Swindles, but these bottom barracks are definitely going to go down with no contest. There is a fortification up, and they're going to do exactly that and try and wait out this next eight seconds left until they can get Swindles up to try and defend these barracks. It's not going to happen. They're going to get both of the barracks here, and then they're going to go back and try and get back into the middle here, but they have the Radiance agents, they can take a fight here, almost everyone will be up, except for Hawk, which I guess is the main team fight ultimate fallen. here, because now they're backing out again, it's 62 minutes and we still have yet to see any initial progress on the true decimation of one's other base. So they're, they're just going to reset into the forest here, trying to figure out whether or not they want to get moving here, and uh, you know, it's not really going to work out too well, Spectres just still hasn't bought boots travels at 6.2, uh, the 6.2k total net worth here, but there's Mega Creeps in two lanes. The ultimate comes down on Jesse, trying trying to get something here. But Haunt is available on Jesse. Uh, in comes the Phoenix, but he just forgot to disjoint from that, and now he's now it's dead. Yewar is actually going to go down here. Yewar does not have any method of escape except for getting shallow graves, and uh, it's not really going to matter. He's going to take way too much damage for it to be effective here. And meanwhile, buys back, does Haunt back in. And Phoenix ult does go down, but she's way out of the way. It's not going to land on anyone. Uh, Phoenix is still just racking the damage out on here. Yewar just drop it, rub it down. Secondary Phoenix ult be dropped down. There's no way that Complexity is going to be able to recover from this. He's going to let the game try to expire here, but it doesn't matter. Good game is called out. And that is the end of game two and the end of the lower bracket qualifiers. And that means that DC is going to go to the final... I guess, you know, the final bracket, whatever it's called. And um, hopefully, we're going to see some more crazy plays that we saw today. But indefinitely, um, Complexity definitely put up a better fight than they did last game. Last game, there was no fight whatsoever. So in this game, they definitely showed more determination and more power towards they have the ability to assert that power and become more dominant in the game. Um, I don't really have too much I can explain here, you know. Uh, Complexity had really good picks, DC had really good picks, just the game went way too late. I mean, almost everybody on the side of DC is level 25, and if not, it's the Night Stalker who was just the running ward. So even then, you know, the Warlock was still a really good idea. Running him mid and getting him that initial farm was probably the best thing that Complexity could have done, but they just didn't take the beginning and initiative initiative too well and they were still getting caught out way too much the gyrocopter and the slardar both getting stunned and killed almost immediately as soon as they could but um other than that there's not really too much else i can comment to this game i mean it was an hour game i definitely saw it going to be a long one when specter was going to be picked up here and um complexity has a really good favorite like a really good wanting to play late game kind of lineup idea they always want to do late game so uh i always figured it was going to be a late game but um, thank you all for watching, guys. This will be the last game we'll be casting for today, and uh, tomorrow we'll go and try and do it again if there's any more up. But uh, other than that, I will see you guys all next time. Thank you for watching uh, Dota 2 Casting by Party PD. And if you could, please drop a like, a favorite, or subscribe. We're trying to get 100 subscribers here so we can get moving into some further production of other things. Because 100 subscribers means that we can actually get some sort of actual monthly income. Or weekly income, I think. I can't remember how much income you get from it. But basically, we just need 100 subscribers to get the income coming in. And then we can actually do some more crazier things. Anyway, I'll see you guys all next time. Thank you for watching. And this is Party PD signing off.